So my question is about magical versus mundane tools. Can I use my everyday things for magic? I read a book recently where the author said to make magical crafts, you need an altar cloth, dedicated crafting tools, totally separate from your regular needles, scissors, thread, and to spread chips of garnet stones all about to make it a ritual space. I've seen similar things about your everyday broom versus a besom that is only used to clean energetically. I don't think my ancestors were purchasing or making a whole set of separate tools to do folk magic work, but I could be wrong. I'd love to hear your opinion as a professional and longtime pr practitioner. Thank you. This is a great question. So with this question, we enter into options, really. So I think that, you know, this, whoever, you know, this book where they're saying have these special dedicated tools, I think there's an advantage to that. I also think there's an advantage to using your mundane tools for magic as well. So we'll talk about those two things. The first thing, having a separate set of tools that you only use for magic. Well, there is some advantages to that. When we have special tools that we only use for magic, then when we start to work with that tool, it already enters us into a magical space, right? If we're bringing those tools and we're only using them for magic, it's like having ritual clothing. When you put on your ritual clothing, it automatically signals to your psyche, to your body, to those around you that this is a magical act that I'm doing. So there is an advantage to having those magical tools. Another advantage to having separate magical tools is that um, they build up energy. So if you are consistently, let's say, working with an inscriber to inscribe on your candles and you only use that inscriber to inscribe in, you know, intentions on your candles, then you're adding energy to that candle to that, um, your, and also to the tool itself. So there, that's the advantage of having separate magical tools. Let's go look at the other option. The other option is using your mundane tools for magic. I love using mundane tools for magic. I do a little bit of both actually. I have special tools that I use. I also have some use mundane tools in my magic. I'm a huge advocate of making every part of your day magical. That means doing magical acts throughout your day with your mundane life putting intention behind the things that you're doing. For example, you're, you're, if you're making soup for dinner, you can infuse that soup with a spell and make it a potion, right? There's nothing wrong with doing that. You can think about the herbs that you're putting into your soup and how they can be used magically and then putting an intention on that soup. It's a mundane thing. You need to eat dinner, but it also has been created and made magical. So I don't have, if I'm making a potion, I don't have a special teapot for potion making. I don't have a special kettle for, for making, boiling the water for my tea making. Who has the room for all of that stuff? I use my mundane tools to make magical things, but I do have special magical tools like candle inscribers, um, like the trays that I put my spells on. Um, my candle spells on, um, like altar cloths. So I think you can kind of go with a little bit of both. There's nothing to say you can't do both. If you want to turn your mundane tools into magical tools, bless them. Or before you do the magical act, say, now I'm going to center. Now I'm going to sweep away negativity with my mundane broom, right? Or um, if you want to have those special tools that you infuse with your energy, that's fine too. So this is one of those wonderful things that you get to decide for yourself. Myself, any other teacher may have their opinion, but you get to decide what works for you. And you might decide you have some regular tools, mundane tools that you use for magic, and you might have some special tools that you use for your magic, and both are fine. You can do both. All right. 